on behalf of the Richmond Fellowship Society India, Lady Irwin College of Delhi University, and Rahat Charitable and Medical Research Trust, I welcome all our esteemed panelists, volunteers from the different branches of RFS, and all those who have joined us today in this fourth webinar in the series, Mental Health and Happiness. This series was started in July. The first one was on the power of gratitude. The second one in August was understanding mental health, learning and unlearning about mental illnesses. The third one was on the art of caregiving. Today, in the fourth series, we are going to talk about joy of volunteering. I'm sure that all of you who are going to be here will be inspired and motivated after listening to the volunteers and the work that they are doing. The purpose of starting this series was to get a better understanding from different perspectives about mental health and also to give visibility to the work being done by the Richmond Fellowship Society in India. What is volunteering? Volunteering is something that is where you give your time and energy for a cause. Helping a friend or a relative is not volunteering. Volunteering, if you're doing something without receiving cash is not volunteering. It is much more than that. It is improving the quality of life, the ecosystem through the volunteers, through the people whose quality of life is improved and who in turn make a difference in the lives of many people and for a cause. Volunteering, we always ask what is the purpose of volunteering. People join an organization or they work in the community as volunteers because volunteers can be informal working in a community or it can be formal through organizations. But the main purpose that differentiates volunteers from other people is the, their passion and their desire to give something to society. So the purpose could be philanthropic. Most of the volunteers have an attitude of gratitude. And it can also be feeling of social responsibility because in the context of mental health, volunteers feel that it is not the fault of the persons living with mental illness that they are in this situation and they feel it is their social responsibility to help them. Now, very often volunteers ask themselves, what will I get? What will I get by giving my time and energy? Studies have shown that in the context of mental health, people volunteer out of curiosity. Many students especially, are very keen to learn more about the behavior of persons living with mental illness. So they are curious. That could be one reason. It could also be because of uh, wanting to grow professionally and they want to have a career where they want to make sure that before launching themselves into a particular vocation, they know exactly what is involved. So they like to volunteer for some time. These days, volunteers, people don't have time. It's a fast moving world. So we talk of the concept of micro volunteering. Micro volunteering means that you can give your time and energy for a cause. It doesn't have to be a long-term commitment. It can be offline, it can be online. And it can be anything where you feel you're going to make a difference in the lives of people. Before I end, I would like to share a few lines which I have written. 
Volunteers are blessed. Yes, indeed, they are blessed. Volunteers are blessed to think beyond themselves, to find reasons for action, not excuses for inaction. Volunteers derive energy from the needy and deprived, people whose lives they enriched through their selfless service. Volunteers work without expectation of cash, kind and award for sustaining their motivation to give smiles of faces their biggest reward. Volunteers build life skills for improving quality of life, for giving resources, skills unhesitatingly, they enrich themselves abundantly. Volunteers give with humility, receiving blessings and love. Joy hunting is not needed for those who experience the joy of volunteering. So I will now like to introduce the moderator for today's session, Professor Aparna Khanna. Professor Aparna Khanna is teaching in Lady Irwin College. She was also my student and colleague. And I'm very happy that uh, we have been working together with some of the panelists here today, whom you are going to meet. And Dr. Aparna is going to ask them questions. And we hope that this will be an enjoyable and joyful experience for you. Over to you, Aparna. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. As uh, Dr. Seth has informed, this is the fourth uh, in the series of webinars that we have organized uh, over the last four months uh, to ensure that we all are able to experience uh, happiness through various ways and uh, share our experiences, challenges, and uh, you know issues that are top of the mind for us with respect to our mental health as um, an issue that we um, may are either directly affected by or that we uh, feel strongly for. So um, I will begin the proceedings uh, by just giving a brief outline as to how the webinar will go. Uh, today, we have two sets of people with us. One who are volunteers with the various, uh, with the four branches of RFS, that is Richmond Fellowship Society. And each of those volunteers uh, will share, will be invited to share their experience and as to how and why did they start volunteering and how are they contributing and what keeps them going. So we will first begin by, you know, listening to some real experiences of volunteers who have been associated with the different branches over the last several years. Um, and it's a very interesting mix of people, I'm sure, as you get to uh, you know, hear their experiences, you'll realize, um, you know, what makes a volunteer. The second group of people are also volunteers, but they are professionals in their own right as well. And they will give their own perspective as to how, uh, you know, being professionals as they are, yet they are volunteering to support the cause of mental health. And they are part of various voluntary organizations or groups or in their own right, they are representing the cause of mental health um, in different bodies, uh, be it government or be it uh, the non-government uh, sector. So um, let's begin the proceedings for today and let's hear some of the experiences of our volunteers. We have four volunteers, as I just shared. We have a volunteer, Sri Lekha uh, Janandan, who is from uh, who is from RFS Bangalore. We have Sumita Chopra ji, who is um, you know volunteering with RFS Delhi branch. We have uh, Dr. Ramay uh, Venkat Ramaya, who is representing RFS Sidlagata, which is in Karnataka. And we also have Rashmi Dani, who is uh, volunteering with RFS Lucknow. So here today is a national integration of volunteers, I think from the length and breadth of the country. And these people I'm sure will share their experiences to, um, uh, to I, I hope to enthuse uh, many of those are, of us who are uh, participants here, who are part of the audience. And uh, also, um, you know, give a boost to the motivation of uh, some of us who are already uh, volunteering. Um, I will be, 
putting two sets of questions across to these volunteers. And uh, before I do that, before I put a, put the question across to each volunteer, I will give a brief um, you know introduction to each person. So to begin with, I would like to um, introduce uh, Sri Lekha ji, and she, as I said, she uh, she's a volunteer with RFS Bangalore. Sri Lekha ji holds an MSc in Counseling and Family Therapy from IGNU, with additional qualifications in English, Sociology, and Rural Development. She's an accomplished author. She writes in, uh, uh, you know, for Malayalam literature. And she's an active volunteer currently at RFS Bangalore, where she fosters cognitive development and creativity inspired by her, uh, by the dedicated staff there. Uh, her previous volunteer experience includes Asra Kalyan Childline. And uh, Sri Lekha ji, it, please allow me to put the first question across to you. And that is, uh, please tell us, about your, you know, your experience of volunteering with RFS. Why did you choose to volunteer with RFS, and what kind of activities are you specifically doing um, in in the Bangalore branch uh, as a volunteer? Please, over to you. Good afternoon, all the panelists. It would be a great uh, appreciation for me to take part in the panel. Uh, first of all. I would like to thank respected Dr. Aditya for providing me this great opportunity for volunteering in RFS Bangalore. Why I join RFS? RFS Richmond Fellowship Society is the only national level no to profit non-governmental and secular organization. RFS helping individuals contributing towards the upliftment of the community and the nation as a whole. It is a psychosocial rehabilitation. Interestingly, now it is working in different ways in the last few decades. It includes certainly the therapeutic community model and various diverse ways of working in and for the community. Working in RFS, I get satisfaction. It reduces my stress, strain, and enhanced well-being. Experiences and uh, talking about my experiences in RFS Bangalore, every day I learn new, new experiences because the clients are coming from diverse background. It helps to perform my roles effectively with confidence, empathy, compassion, and teamwork. There, I conduct some activities uh, like uh, picture drawing, memory test, uh, counting words, simple arithmetic mathematical problems, addition, subtraction, uh, and some uh, storytelling also. One of the joyful memory in RFS Bangalore, I saw the client's birthday celebration. All the members in RFS celebrate like a family and awarding gifts. It makes me great pleasure. Uh, that is one joyful memory. Uh, now, my suggestion to other volunteers, bring more volunteers. Integrating uh, volunteering with the curriculum so we can bring more youth because youth have more energy. It makes lessen the impact of critical incidents and offer broad mental health support. Be the change we wish to see in the world because volunteers are the positive agents in the family and society. So I love my work very happily and sincerely. This is it is a joy of volunteering. It is a God bless art. It gives salvation to my mind also, ma'am. That's all. 
for my <laughs> thank you silika ji i think uh, so that uh, you know feeling of fulfillment yeah. and uh, as you're saying you are benefiting of course you are doing so much service but you are benef personally benefiting through this experience yeah. and i think that is something that uh, should be a take away and your uh, invitation your uh, you know your request for more people to volunteer i think uh, should really go well with the audience here and i hope we are able to enthuse more people to volunteer selflessly and take the process forward yeah. furthering the causes that uh, the organizations that we work with or any other organization that or cause that they like to support if they can volunteer that would be a, a huge achievement of today's event so thank you shilekha ji thank you we, yeah thank you so we move on to our next volunteer that is sumita chopra ji and sumita chopra ji um, uh, you know is volunteering with the rfs delhi branch Uh, she is a talented artist let me tell you she creates beautiful paintings and mandalas along with uh, alongside her art she is passionate about baking and uh, and she volunteers at vishwas uh, you know delhi um, teaching members simple yet delicious uh, recipes twice a month she uh, i mean she, she's called pinky pinky ji um, you know affectionately and her love for plants and her love for uh, helping our members to uh, to 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 create beautiful potted plants is something that is really appreciated by all the members so over to you sumita ji and asking you our first question uh, rather i think you can uh, if you wish to you can address uh, both aspects together also just like sri lekha ji that one please tell us why did you choose to volunteer with rfs delhi branch and what are some of the activities uh, maybe you can elaborate on some things that i have just listed because i am sure you've done much more and uh, also share with us a happy memory as a volunteer uh, good afternoon everyone i uh, it's pleasure meeting all of you most of you are meeting for the first time i have never you know attended a webinar before and uh, i use i started volunteering about 15 years ago but never uh, not at rfs i used to do different you know i have worked with kids i have worked at assisted living i have worked in the uh, sri ram school but uh, rfs i got in touch with dr mridula said and she made me like got me interested in rfs so i was not very regular uh, volunteer in the beginning but since a few months i go twice a month and uh, teach cooking and all before uh, this i used to just go and help them you know paint some diyas or something like that and you know that's all but now i go and teach cooking like it gives me a great pleasure they are very interested in it they are really involved in it you know we make them do everything the whole recipe they do it i just you know guide them and uh, they do everything uh they even cook in the kitchen also and uh, planters also uh, i you know i take the planters and i make them cook and i then just do the finishing touches so that they look nice and then i get them home and i tell my gardener to plant some plants in this and i take it back for them so that you know they can enjoy it so it gives me like gives me a lot of peace of mind and gives me pleasure you know i really enjoy interacting with them um, <laughs> i can't say anything more that's more and one uh, good memory is that one of the members she was never interested in cooking or anything but slowly she started joining she started coming to the kitchen with me and asking questions which was i think that is a big really great achievement for me that she started doing that um, that's all i can say <laughs> and so thank you so much sumita ji i know uh, your actions speak more than uh, your <laughs> the kind of number of words that you have used we know we all know and the members at the delhi branch really appreciate all the efforts that you put in uh, you know you. the time thank that you. you spend and we hope you continue to do that 
Yeah, uh, I'm sure. I will. I will. No doubt about that. that. Take away from uh, what you have just shared is that you started by doing one thing, one small thing, you know, maybe one or two activities, and today you've expanded the scope of your work, the range of your, uh, you know, activities that you're doing with the members, and uh, it just shows how much, uh, you know, members have also taken on, uh, you know. I really you enjoy it. There. <laughs> and yeah. uh, and I hope you continue to enrich yes. the yes, life I of will. our. I will. I will. Definitely. And let me tell you, we also learn from you. Whenever you <laughs> see the pictures that uh, are shared on our group, I'm sure we learn a lot and we're all enthused. So thank, thank you, you so much, Sumaita ji. I uh, would now like to um, go on to uh, our next volunteer, that is Dr. Venkata Ramaya. I hope uh, sir has joined. Uh, Prajita, can you please update me on that? Can we move on to the next volunteer? Oh, okay. sure. So we move on to uh, Rashmi, uh, Mrs. Rashmi Dani. And Rashmi Dani ji is a volunteer with RFS Lucknow. And uh, let me briefly introduce Rashmi ji to all of you. So uh, Rashmi ji is a passionate and dedicated individual, currently a volunteer as I am at Nav Uday Mansik Swastha Sansthan, which is the RFS Lucknow branch. Uh, this is how it is called. She's committed to improving mental health and well-being within our community um, and through her yoga classes. She has a background in social work and a deep-rooted commitment to positively impacting the lives of individuals facing mental health challenges. So Rashmi ji, the same question to you as well. Please tell us what makes you volunteer with RFS, the Lucknow branch, and what are some of the different activities that you're involved in? I've just listed a few very briefly. And of course, tell us one happy memory um, that you've had as an experience, while experience, you know, while working as a volunteer with the uh, Lucknow branch. Please. I'm Rishmi Dani, as Ma'am has already told you, uh, from Lucknow. And I'm a, an Art of Living teacher since uh, 15 years. I joined RFS Lucknow uh, six months ago in March this year. And uh, what happened? My husband go, got sick during COVID, COVID period uh, due to acute stress. Then I went to Dr. Shashi Rai. She, with God's grace, uh, she cured him. And I thought that I saw the patient uh, there and I thought that I must do something for them. So once in a month, I, I'm going there and um, I really enjoy. What happened before that, what happened with me? Um, I was a chronic asthma patient. I used to keep a oxygen cylinder at home and uh, uh, I was not able to uh, walk a few steps or talk something. Uh, I was uh, teaching in Jaipur. I have taught in Jaipuria school, Lucknow, State MR Jaipuria school also for uh, 15 years, 16 years. So I have taken VRS from there. And after joining AOL, and um, uh, Sudarshan Kriya helped, it, helped me a lot. Then um, uh, in RFS, I'm teaching uh, them uh, yoga, pranayam, meditation, and they enjoy singing also because my sub I'm, an, I'm in music and English. I, they enjoy singing with me also. It's a uh, volunteering we can't express in words. It, it's uh, it gives you immense satisfaction. Whatever uh, we are uh, preaching to them, we are uh, knowledge is not only to supply it. So it should be we should apply it also. And um, you get a lot of energy. You can uh, your working efficiency increases. You can do much work in less hours. So, and they also enjoy. Once in a month, I am going there and I really enjoy. One um, recent memory I will share you, will share with you, all of you. Uh, after Janma, Janmashtami, I, was, I, I saw a, a client there sitting in a corner. He was not uh, participating in anything. When I started, I, I took harmonium and play, I, was, I was playing. I showed, I showed he joined and he... I felt so happy. And uh, I, I always say dependency on medicine is not good. You you must do daily, daily. I am coming here once in a month, but you must practice daily yoga, pranayam, meditation. And you will certainly see a change in your life. And what else? <laughs> oh, good. So thank you. I think uh, the fact I that volunteering has been... been 
uh, that will be therapeutic for you as well i think that is something that all of us should take a note of that it's not that only you are giving off a service or you are giving your time and energy but it is enriching you as a human being it is enriching you as an individual it is even healing you and curing you as an individual when you are you know uh, giving your energy to care for someone else so thank you so much um, uh, rashmi ji and uh, i think i'll go back from here with you only with the last question to you and then i'll go back to the other two uh, you know panelists also who are our volunteers here would you like to give any one tip to other volunteers so this room this meeting today is full of uh, you know a lot of uh, i'm sure family members of pmis a lot of um, uh, students uh, you know from various educational institutions and public in general so would you like to give any one tip so if uh, if you have to if you want to volunteer what is it that a volunteer should know or should keep in mind um, to be a good volunteer it is said that uh, sharing your joys is all, always good na where khushiyan baatne se badhti hai whatever we got we must share with others these are things of experiences only we can't uh, express it in words when you go kehte na manzil mil hi jayegi niklo to sahi gumrah to ho hai jo ghar se niklegi nahi to bas aap you must do something it it will give you you, uh, you um, can't match it right so the pleasure the joy you can't you can't express it उसको सुनिए समझिए देखिए और so thank you samita ji then we come back to uh, shri lekha shri lekha ji please any one tip for, from your side to our volunteers my suggestion is uh, every family member one of them must go to volunteership because it is a um, uh, what we say back to community so from family we need peace and uh, get to otherness from community support and societal support volunteership is must so every one of the family member is this necessary for today's day to day life go to volunteership because it reduces our stress strain quarrels community violations the youth should learn about family values um, societal values otherwise our nation uh, day to day facing very uh, challenges mainly harmful challenges so it can reduce so uh, only through volunteership so youth anyone uh, there is no age limit we only say youth because they have a lot of energy it of wasting uh, too much energy for any uh, uh, unwanted deeds it is better opportunity uh, to make the world happier so volunteership is must make the journey with the joy of volunteering <laughs> that is and make the world happy one one so more thing i want to want to mention yes yeah. sashmi sorry sorry i interrupted <laughs> ah, community so volunteers those, who, those who see i we don't have time that your working efficiency increases yeah you are so working is for us work in a in single hour <laughs> to yeah. us Uh, any leisure time if is uh, go to some uh, uh, any leisure times so in saturday or sundays uh, we spend one hour or half an hour uh, monthly once or twice uh, two months uh, uh, one day whatever time you like there is no that uh, regular time or fixed time it makes a lot of pleasure ma'am uh, so volunteer thank you uh... <laughs> थैंक यू श्री लेखा जी एंड थैंक यू रश्मि जी टू टेक अवेज एक तो वॉलेंटियरिंग की कोई उम्र नहीं है वॉलेंटियर यू डोंट हैव टू बी अ यंग पर्सन ओनली टू वॉलेंटियर ईच वन ऑफ अस सिटिंग हियर 
uh, irrespective of the number of white hair we have or don't have, we should volunteer. And that's what Sri Lekha ji is saying. Yeah. And Rashmi ji is pointing out at the importance of time. That even one minute, once a week, once a month, once in two months, a few moments, if you can devote to a cause and go and you know give your time and energy, uh, great it will be challenge to the society. Very yes, and it will really contribute to the society. So great, thank you so much. So here you heard our uh, three volunteers. Uh, one of our volunteers, Dr. Venkata Ramaya, is um, has uh, has I think still not joined us. And if I'm not wrong, he may be right now offering his services to uh, maybe people with mental health issues. Sir, uh, Dr. Venkata Ramaya, who hasn't joined us yet, is a 90-year-old retired senior psychiatrist, and he is a shining example of selfless and boundless compassion. And despite his advanced age, he travels every month 70 kilometers uh, from Bangalore to Sidla Gata in Karnataka. And over the last 17 years, he has uh, you know, provided invaluable monthly medications to patients and helped them to heal uh, you know, from their mental health issues. Even during the COVID-19 pandemic, he has been going on. So I'm sure if he's not here right now, uh, he, I'm sure he is right, uh, offering his uh, services to uh, a person in need and I hope he joins us in a while and we will uh, definitely li uh, like you all in the audience here to hear sir but um, taking the process forward uh, we are from our end uh, the organization the three organizations that is uh, Lady Avan College, Rahat and RFS have been collaborating with each other uh, over the since I would say 2015 and we have together uh, put a campaign um, called campaign for mental health Simply, it's called hashtag C4MH. We do share information about it through the social media pages of Rahat, uh, uh, RFS, as well as uh, uh, Lady Avan College. So please, uh, I would request a Prajita because this campaign has also uh, emerged from the ground. It has emerged through the efforts of volunteers uh, like some of us sitting here. And uh, we would definitely like to show that uh, share this video so that we are able to infuse many other people who are sitting here to take on the cause because you don't have to be a mental health practitioner to advocate the cause of mental health. We've been engaging and involving young people, um, you know, people in from uh, urban areas and rural areas through this campaign to volunteer to to take forward the message of mental health and help, um, you know, uh, addressing the issue of stigma and shame in the community, which is uh, related to um, mental health issues. So over to your Prajita, if you could quickly share the video with us, and then we will move on to our panels.
So thank you, Prajata. This is uh, just a glimpse into the kind of work that has been going on. And uh, this is uh, from our end, a little contribution to getting more and more people across, uh, you know, involved. Uh, we've reached out to various parts of the country through this campaign. And we are always eager to go to one new place, one new community uh, to, uh, to share, um, you know, a fun film moment using games to talk about issues like myths and misconceptions associated with mental health and uh, illnesses like depression, anxiety, schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, and uh, a lot of you know, issues like substance abuse disorder and children and mental illnesses. So, um, and we are always open to developing more such communication tools um, on any need-based uh, you know, issue that uh, comes up to us through um, you know, any of the volunteer, uh, volunteer organizations or, or other organizations that we work with. So thank you and taking the proceedings forward. Um, I would like to now uh, take forward this discussion to our uh, panelists here. Uh, we have four panelists with her, uh, with us here right now, Dr. Uh, Sheikh Abdul Basir, uh, Ms. Piyusha Sharma, uh, Mr. Shahzad Akhuram, and Huskare Aditya, Dr. Huskare Aditya. I will briefly introduce each of these um, you know, panelists, and I will be putting up one question to each of them. And while I put up the question to them and introduce them, you'll realize they are also one. Um, so let's take this conversation forward and uh, let me introduce you to our first panelist, that is um, Dr. Bashir. So Dr. Sheikh Abdul um, Bashir is a senior consultant psychiatrist. He's currently practicing in Delhi. He has uh, over 33 years of experience. Uh, he has pursued his MBBS from SCV Medical College, Katak, and he's and followed by a DPM from the Central in Institute of Psychiatry, Ranchi. He's worked in GB Pant and Ramanohar Luya hospitals in Delhi and has also worked, um, you know, in the United Kingdom and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. And he has taught at Hamdan University and IP University also. He's a founder director of Mind Piper. Uh, and uh, this is an NGO working in the area again of promoting mental health in, uh, amongst grassroots communities. He has special interest in mental health advocacy. And he's involved in numerous philanthropic activities as a volunteer. He speaks five languages, Bengali, Uriya, Hindi, Arabic, and English. And he's a great warrior as an, uh, and, and yes, he is an ardent painter. So he, you, you have to connect with him to see his artwork and it is outstanding. So Dr. Bashir. Um, Thank you. Am I audible? Yes, sir. My question to you, sir, is that being a psychiatrist who has been supporting multiple mental health awareness programs on ground, uh, and especially the campaign for mental health that uh, we um, are running here. Why do you volunteer for promoting mental health in the community? You are a practitioner. You are practice. You are not a practice. But you've been volunteering and you've been supporting us through. What makes you do that? And what would be your advice to other mental health professionals? Please, Dr. Bashir. Uh, in fact, uh, I find volunteering not something extraordinary. Like, rather, that is very innate. That is very spontaneous. And I should say, I'm lucky that that started from my childhood through, through my parents and some great teachers. So I still remember the introduction to volunteerism is uh, in my school. Our teacher was suddenly looking for volunteers. And automatically, you know, those volunteers were selected. We feel great that we are the selected few. Anyway, so even if I'm a uh, psychiatrist uh, and then the range increased and the moment you are a psychiatrist, your role uh, actually is a bit defined. People expect from you as a psychiatrist what you can do. And they expect that way and that's so easy for me to do. Like uh, uh, if you ask me that uh, as far as why I do volunteering, rather a volunteer should not ask that why he's doing. That pleasure in itself. And, you know, I, I remember the that last step of uh, Abraham Maslow's thing that uh, there's something very spiritual about it. You should feel gratitude, as uh, Professor Seth was telling, that you have something to give others. You have something to give others, and that is true. So many modes are there. Like, uh, because I know that uh, I can write some prescription. And for us, for doctors and psychiatrists, it is so easy to provide the service to the community. And I have to just uh, do some uh, free camps. And when I do such camps, 
uh, uh, a lot of people get benefit and Delhi, even if uh, they say it is a capital, it is full of, you know, very low socioeconomic status areas. And that is the area I have to even actually cross, you know, water drench uh, road to uh, go and uh, do some campaigns there. And even there was not even a fan, but I did. And I never complained. Rather, there was so much of joy in that, there is no space to complain. And then luckily, I still very eagerly remember that uh, that association with uh, Professor Aparna Department, uh, her department in Lady Irwin College, that uh, I love any visual art. I do. I do a lot of paintings and uh, drawings and all that. And uh, then uh, already I'm into mental health. So these two combined, they are, they are, they are making you know, comics to educate people. They are making big uh, games and designing them. And I have to put that mental health input if the information is correct. So that is, the, again, another thing which makes me feel that we need more people. We need more, more diverse people. And we need to collaborate. Because there will be more new uh, creative ideas coming in. And there is immense scope, immense, immense area to do. And then, of course, in volunteering, like, as I say, that yes, uh, from youth, what, why do we need youth, you know? Because voluntary will actually benefit them. Even if they're not coming for any benefit, just volunteering, but it will benefit them because it benefited me a lot. I remember my medical college volunteering experience. In our college, there was a social service guild. So the work of that guild is very, very, uh, very, very philanthropic. We used to collect medicines from the uh, professor's chambers and distribute those free medicines to the patients who were very needy. We used to have regular blood donation camps. We used to have regular camps going to the villages and that benefited two ways. Number one, I have actually have better pharmacological knowledge than my other students' colleagues who are not involved. I used to be very close to our actual clinician's actual process because when our professor was in the college, in the, in the ward, they are behavior, when we are in the village, actually sitting in the community and serving people, their behavior was totally different. We used to learn a lot clinically. And then that joy of, you know, that uh, that joy of giving, I still remember uh, that was not part of my job. Our uh, professor has operated on a young boy and he told that you, you should take care of them. So instead of just, just like that duty, I used to visit in the evening also. That was not my duty time. And after that, I'm a post anesthesia and a bit recovered. That boy one day remembered me on that uh, on that round. And he shouted, at, uh, shouting to his mother, that mother, mother, that good, good uh, doctor is coming today. And already he has been seen by one of the senior most professors is that I'm a very insignificant third year student. So these are jobs are immense in every step. So uh, you need to just find out and everybody has a talent. And someone, someone who has not, uh, it is again, you know, the more you do, you are experienced and you are able to do better. Now something another, I remember that what I got benefited through volunteering during my student days, that I knew how to organize. We stood a lot of organizing, organized things like I have uh, that that event, blood donation camp. We have to call a lot of people. We have to uh, cite, uh, uh, go into sort of marketing to tell people that something like this is happening. We had also taken out, uh, uh, you know, uh, processions against uh, the drug abuse thing, teaching people. We have actually gone meeting new people. And this meeting new people has given me a lot of, uh, 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 a lot of, uh, you know, the soft skills, which is today really helping in my practice. And uh, of course, uh, I'll say that uh, all the religions, like our, our religions, Islam says that uh, uh, giving is the best virtue. And I always remember that great teaching of uh, Swami Vivekananji, Jive Prem Kore Jai John, Sei John Seviche Isha. Means it is the best server to God, the best religious type of serving you can do is please serve the create, creations of God. It is not even the only human beings, but any creation of God. I love the greens. I, I love to call myself a green warrior. I really don't like a cutting of trees. I like to plant a lot of trees. And then another thing I'm telling you that uh, in terms of, uh, in mental health especially, why it is a huge area, still there is a lot of misconceptions, still there is a lot of lack of 
mental health professionals so who will take care of these things so we need more help like when you when you um, try to uh, carry on you know like uh, a cylinder you cannot carry it it will give you a back pain so what you do is that the moment two more person hold it it is nothing like you're carrying a small child so that is the same thing happens with any campaign and that's why i'm very happy to associate with this uh, uh, mental health campaign um, by uh, rfs and only thing i really regret that rfs a bit uh, that vishwas is a bit a bit distance from my residence otherwise i would really love to uh, volunteer there in every form and i should thank you all to give me a, such a platform and if you ask me i can talk on and on uh, on this topics my own personal experiences as a volunteer i really i love to practice i love to see my patients and my patients know that but apart from that i would love to do something where i don't expect anything i just do it for the doing self and that makes me closer to god you know and that is that ultimate spiritual level of attainment and every small action is an spiritual act for you and especially the act of charity and i think that is actually practiced in sikhism to go sikhs are so famous all over the world and you look at them in christianity so much emphasis is on given on charity and of course our hinduism now this navratri is coming there will be lot of you know free uh, langars and all that so we 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 already dealt in an, especially in india like uh, such an conglomeration of so many beautiful cultures religious and all that we are actually rooted into you know like uh, volunteering and uh, even i my go to my village if there is a death as soon as i went to my village and there is a death you know young people are automatically doing so many things like people are coming from outside they are already made to see they are offered water they are offered food they are given offered guidance and you know in village there is uh, some water to wash and all that they are helping and i think as i told you lot many things to talk but thank you all of you it was a great to listen each of those volunteers because they are talking from their heart and thank you all again thank you dr vishir i think um, knowing you i think all the creative activities that you uh, you know uh, take part in whether that's art whether that's poetry whether that is uh, you know we the nature the pictures photographs of nature uh, that you shared each of those is very inspiring and therapeutic to us and it motivates us to continue to work towards uh, you know seeking things that can the simple things that can uh, give us happiness and as you are saying each one of us can volunteer and is capable and uh, you know you don't really need any uh, of course if you have some special skills of course they add to the nature of voluntary work that you do but just being there for others to begin with and gradually one finds their calling so thank you so much dr bishit we'll move on to now miss piyusha uh, piyusha sharma is an assistant professor at the dme media school in noida and she is ugc net qualified and holds a masters in mass communication and journalism she has worked with reputed media organizations like z news india today group and in shorts and has experience in print television and digital media our association with piyusha has been uh, uh, you know through the student volunteers and interns that dme media school has uh, uh, you know assigned to rfs delhi and the students have done some very good work so piyusha we need to know a few things from you how has this volunteering experience of students contributed to the co- to their coursework and uh, their skill development um, you know because uh, today in the new education policy is talking of uh, engaging students in internship in a very formal manner and there is accountability there is uh, some concrete outcomes that they have to deliver and in order for students to do that we need dedicated teachers who will monitor all that and who will hold hand support so please share us, share with us uh, your experience of coordinating this voluntary uh, you know internship experience of your students and uh, how from volunteering you were able to motivate them to take it up as internship uh, with rfs delhi branch over to you piyusha very good afternoon to all the panelists uh, the volunteers and all the participants um, as ma'am have already introduced me i am uh, 
uh, I'm connected to uh, RFS with some of the uh, students from DME. There are eight students from DME who have been volunteering with RFS. And uh, when we talk about their curriculum, they are uh, they are all media students. I teach mass communication and the students who are volunteering, they are all uh, media students. And they have various subjects related to social media. They have such subjects related to de development communication. They have uh, subjects related to print media and also human values. So we, we teach them all those subjects here, but we all want them to have some hands-on experience of working in these particular fields. So uh, RFS gave uh, the students this platform from the students who are working with RFS in terms of promoting the work that RFS do. And students have been participating into making the newsletter for the RFS. They have worked in the so with the social media team of RFS. Also, uh, a few of the, few the students worked with uh, the website. So here they sort of learned everything that we have been teaching them theoretically. They got the practical experience of all these things through RFS. And I want to thank uh, Mridula ma'am, Aparna ma'am in helping the students uh, learn all those things. And when talking about the joy of volunteering, I remember that students first visited RF, uh, RFS Delhi branch, which was with me. I was also, uh, I went uh, there with them. And while we were coming back from uh, Vishwas, was the students were uh, asking me when are we going to come back here again when are we uh, when are uh, when is the college sending us back again so we i said that we will plan that soon uh, it, it shows that when the students went there they they felt welcomed they felt like uh, they felt being loved everybody else the members over there they wanted to sit and talk with them students also felt this uh, as just madhura madhula ma'am was telling that uh, you know it starts with curiosity and we have all the young minds here in dme so they, when they went there, they went out of this curiosity that, you know, I want to learn about uh, mental health. I want to learn about how Vishwas works. And then when we were coming up, uh, coming back from there, I would say this curiosity turned into compassion because when they see, they learn how uh, everybody is working together towards the cause and how organized all these things are. So when we were coming back, most of the students, they wanted to, you know, have a long term uh, relationship with the with RFS and wanted to work with the members for the members and wanted to visit there back again. But again, since uh, they are all students, they have their academics um, as well. I, I also have certain constraints and since the location. So we will we were not being able to visit there again, but students did visit again. I was not being able to, and I really regret that. But yeah, uh, the thing is that uh, overall, when it comes to curriculum and learning, the students have uh, learned a lot and not just how to work and how to produce content and how to um, bring all the things together, but rather how to work under certain constraints. Because this is what also they need to learn as as a part of a social media or as a part of a web, uh, website or wherever they want to work in an organization in an organized manner they also learn to work under certain constraints because they used to come up to me ma'am this is not happening that is not happening and Avarna ma'am always had an answer for that you know this is okay fine we will bring it and you know so they also uh, before going to a full-time job and you know joining some organization they already have this experience of how you have to work under certain constraints and uh, apart from that if i talk about just uh not about learning but about volunteering so i'd say they are all media students and if we talk about people who want to join media initially when we start uh, to think about being a media person we all have this common thing in our mind is you know we want Want to make a change we want to work for the society we want to be the voice of the voiceless so all those things which are related to empathy you know those things are there already in the minds of uh, people when they want to join media and want when they want to go into learning mass communication and any other media course and when these kind of students they see how uh, the organizations like rfs are working towards a cause and it gives them all the more encouragement to again work in what what uh, thought they came up with. So yeah, this is one of the things I personally uh, have been volunteering with a volunteering with a lot of organizations. And I I one experience that I would want to share apart from that being uh, 
from uh, the media school was that i have worked with a lot of uh, news organization and i was connected to a lot of ngos as well so the one thing that i don't miss to do it whenever i have my birthday or i have somebody's in my family have a birthday we go to you know various organization the ngos and we celebrate over there and i'm telling you this is another kind of experience which i have personally felt and i can say it over here when uh, i used to post party pictures of of my birthday i used to get you know uh, all the birthday wishes nice birthday wishes and when i used to post pictures related to you know when i went and celebrated my birthday with some of the uh, people um, in various ngos maybe it can be underprivileged children or maybe people having uh, some, some of the other ngos so i when i post those kind of pictures you know so many people post that where is it we also want to go we also want to do this like, connect us to them and then i realize okay there is just one thing that you need you just have to take one step and the people starts coming in that and then i started going there often and i just started posting more and more about it and then i realized okay this is just a small step we don't realize what we are doing we are doing our part and when others see us others see others see us they also get motivated they get inspired and i am very sure that the students will also learn this with working with rfs they will not just learn the skills but also this compassion empathy and uh, you know working towards a cause and i hope that they make something out of it and thank you all again for uh, listening to me and thank you ma'am for giving the students a chance to work with our office hey yeah, thank you piyusha to tumne wo prove kar diya ki there is no age bar young people like you and it's use other young people and thank you for taking that initiative and sharing your personal experience of um, you know motivating your friends so students ko to aap kar hi rahe hain but to motivate your friends your peer group also i think it's really inspiring and uh, wish you all the best in future i'm sure we'll continue our association with dme thanks to you or maybe wherever you move further in your career we hope we stay connected and you keep this voluntary spirit in you thank you uh taking this conversation further and i now invite uh, mr shahzada khurram let me tell you a bit more about him uh, shahzada ji has set up the partition museum in delhi as director he has been the uh, program director for bikaner house as well he is an art advisor personally he is a family carer and also a member of uh, you know smha haryana that state state mental health authority haryana and he is invite uh, and in, is an invited guest for the smha delhi and uh, smha uh, C- cmha that is the central mental health authority of government of india he is also a volunteer with uh, an organization which is known as face me and is currently all india network in charge for the organization as a volunteer so today shahzada ji is with us as a volunteer in his capacity as a volunteer with a whole range of uh, organizations and issues uh, related to mental health and um, my question to him is that being a carer and let me uh, please allow me to explain the meaning of the term carer here because it's very important for our audience to know um, um, as a carer that means shahzada ji is looking after a, fam- a, a person with a mental health you know, issue uh, and he is full time into taking care of this person apart from that he is you know taking up time to volunteer and support other uh, people and families who have uh, either issues related to mental health themselves or amongst their members or are just public at large who reach out to him for help uh, seeking uh, his knowledge his experience and expertise in guiding them to uh, you know seek help for their family members and support for their family members particularly uh, with reference to their mental health issues so shahzada ji being a carer and a volunteer what are your views on why should carers of pmis that is persons with mental illnesses become volunteers how does volunteering support the carers please sure what do you so much uh, first of all i want to thank uh, 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 rfs foundation richmond fellowship uh, society foundation and especially dr mridula sage and dr aparna and also aprajita 
for uh, giving me this opportunity to be on this platform to speak. Um, I also want to thank all the uh, volunteers who presented today, and especially uh, Shri Lekha, uh, from whom I wish to know a little bit more about her literature in Malayalam, and Mandala from uh, Sunita, Sunita Chopra, then Art of Living Rashmi uh, Dani Davi, and uh, I also do Suvarshan Kriya and the artworks of Dr. Bashir and uh, influence of Piyusha for other volunteers. So thank you for everything that you are adding to this spectrum of mental health in your capacity. Because this is such an art and culture gathering, maybe we should have a festival or a fair which should relate mental health and art and culture with it. So, you know, I can curate it as a curator. I don't mind doing it in Delhi for sure. Now, uh, just jumping back into the topic, I put my timer on. Uh, um, uh, first of all, I want to clarify that I've been volunteering in the mental health advocacy uh, space since 2015 and I was introduced to the god of uh, mental health, uh, um, uh, Dr. Nirmala Srinivasan, under whom I think many trees have been planted, uh, many seeds have been planted, uh, who will continue her legacy of making the change and the platform and the landscape of mental health from the government level to the family level or from the family level to the government level. So getting a mentorship under her is in, is in itself a blessing for me. And if there was a, a ministry in, uh, in mental health separately, then I'm sure she would be the minister of uh, mental health. Uh, or if it was a country, she would be the prime minister of mental health. So that is there. Now, just coming to the question that Dr. Uh, Aparna Khanna asked. Um, uh, see, as a carer, uh, we are very uh, deep set into the medical model of uh, uh, dealing with the carer. You know, we are always asking every time we are asking that you have to eat the drug, you have to eat the drug, you have to eat the drug, you have to eat the drug. That's the, the, we are very oriented to the uh, medicine, medical model, which is very important. There is no shortcut to it. If there is a, an escape in medication, then there is a relapse and it expands and multiplies the illness. But there are certain non-medical aspects to things as well, which are considered or covered under the law of mental health and under the law of disability. So uh, disability may, along with um, acid attack victims and along with dwarfism and along with blind and along with deaf, a mental illness is also a discrete disability. और इसका मतलब ये होता है कि जितने भी स्कीम्स और प्रोग्राम्स और फायदे इस एरिया में लोगों को मिलते हैं वो सब मेंटल इलनेस वाले पेशेंट्स को भी मिलेंगे वो सारी पॉलिसीज उनके ऊपर भी अप्लाई होती हैं चाहे वो इंश्योरेंस हो वेदर इट इज इंश्योरेंस वेदर इट इज अ डिसेबिलिटी कार्ड वेदर इट इज यू नो डिस्काउंट ऑन एयर फेयर all those kind of things. So I do advocacy at two levels, uh, as a volunteer and as a carer, uh, at family level and at uh, system level. By system level, I mean people who make the policy. So the in, in simple ways, the way I do this is that I study the law of mental health from a medical standpoint and the law of disability, and then I internalize it as a carer in my own home and see what is working and what is not working. For example, advanced directive ek cheez hoti hai, uh, state mental health authority ek cheez hoti hai, then uh, insurance for mental illness ek cheez hoti hai, uh, pension milti hai, uh, uh, PMIs ko, uh, और मतलब स्टेट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन जो है फ्री दवाइयां देते हैं जन औषधि प्रोग्राम के तहत यू नो अब एज अ केयरर आई फील कि ये मेरी जिम्मेदारी है पहली बात तो मुझे इन सब चीजों के बारे में पता होना चाहिए एज अ केयरर ताकि मैं अपने व्यक्ति विशेष को वो कर सकूं एम्पावर कर सकूं इंपैक्ट ला सकूं उसकी लाइफ में काफी एरियाज की साइड से एम्प्लॉयमेंट में फॉर एग्जांपल जो कि हमारा एक हित हित धारक है हमारे हित में है 
एम्प्लॉयमेंट मिल रहा है इन लोगों को सो so, uh, उसमें क्या कोटा है क्या परसेंटेज है क्या डिस्क्रिमिनेशन है क्या उसकी पावर्स हैं कैसे उनको ट्रेन किया जाए कैसे उनको बताया जाए ऑर्गेनाइजेशंस को कि किस तरीके से यू नो रिलैप्स के सिम्टम्स हो सकते हैं जिनको उनको छुट्टी मिलनी चाहिए उस टाइम पे ऑल दोज काइंड ऑफ थिंग्स आई थिंक इट्स इम्पॉर्टेंट वी हैव मूवड ऑन फ्रॉम स्टिग्मा वी हैव मूव टू डिस्क्रिमिनेशन एंड दैट इज वॉट द फाइट रियली इज फॉर राइट नाउ but stigma is also there in pockets but thanks to organizations like sambandh and uh, you know rfs which is bringing this awareness out you know but we do advocacy to bring impactful changes to humne in law ke bare mein padha aur humne inki workshops kari in the form of legal literacy camps where we internalize it with other families across india so we do it in delhi we do it in bangalore we do it in uh, in bombay we do it in calcutta we do it in odisha we are soon going to start at other states also and in very close coordination with the government which is extremely extremely helpful and cooperative in bringing about those changes so as a carer i became aware of you know disability and i educated the uh, families about it through legal literacy camp to iska mahatva mere liye bad gaya as a carer aur iska mahatva bad gaya parivar walon ke liye jo care kar rahe hain और वो उसमें क्या चीजें उनके हित में काम कर रही हैं और क्या नहीं कर रही हैं बेस्ड ऑन द ग्राउंड रियलिटी ऑफ दी सोशियो इकोनॉमिक सेटअप ऑफ एन इंडियन फैमिली इज द फीडबैक दैट वी गिव टू द गवर्नमेंट एट द स्टेट लेवल एंड एट द सेंट्रल लेवल ताकि वो उन पॉलिसीज और प्रोग्राम्स में वो राहतें ला सके जिन चीजों में हमारे साथ वो कमी पे आ जाती है क्योंकि हमारा सोशियो इकोनॉमिक सेटअप बिल्कुल अलग है और फैमिली इज द बैकबोन ऑफ द पीएमआई एट दिस मोमेंट और अभी कल ही डॉक्टर मित्तल इस चीज को बोल रहे थे कि अगर कोई पीएमआई आज की तारीख में जिंदा है तो वो इसलिए जिंदा है क्योंकि उसके भाई बहन माँ बाप उसको रोटी खिलाते हैं दैट इज द रीजन दैट पीएमआई इज एग्जिस्टिंग अदरवाइज दैट दे वुड बी ऑन द रोड Uh, on the roads basically so i became aware of this i became aware of insurance i became aware of police kaise handle karna chahiye police ko ek pmi ko jisko pura symptom hai so uske bare mein mujhe pata chala i became aware of uh, pension i became aware of the process of disability card jiski basis pe pension bhi milti hai aur bahut sare fayde bhi milte hain तो ये वॉलेंट्री वॉलेंटियर uh, होना इस स्पेस में बहुत जरूरी है एक फैमिली केयरर को ताकि वो इन सब चीजों को समझ पाए नॉट जस्ट द मेडिसिन बट थिंग्स दैट गो बियॉन्ड द मेडिसिन आल्सो एंड इट हैज इट्स चैलेंजेस आल्सो इट इज नॉट जस्ट द जॉय ऑफ वॉलेंट्री इट्स आल्सो द सोरो ऑफ वॉलेंट्रिंग आई वुड से और बे बी नॉट सोरो आई वुड से चैलेंजेस ऑफ वॉलेंट्रिंग एज अ फैमिली केयरर एज अ फैमिली केयर क्योंकि इसका एक इमोशनल इम्पैक्ट होता है क्योंकि ऑलरेडी आई एम होल्डिंग अ लॉट ऑफ इमोशन इन साइड माई सेल्फ फॉर माई ओन मेंटल हेल्थ देन आई हैव द इमोशनल बैगेज ऑफ नॉट बैगेज बट इमोशनल थिंग ऑफ द केयर एंड देन देर इज द फैमिलीज हु हैव देयर इमोशन सो इट टेक्स एन इमोशनल टोल ऑन मी यू नो सो दैट इज अ चैलेंज सेकेंडली देर इज अ स्टिग्मा stigma is at the volunteering level at the advocacy level where carers or family carers are marginalized by professionals and by both at the law level and both at the stakeholder execution level and unko lagta hai ki हमारे पास इतनी नॉलेज कहाँ से आ गई कि हम उनको बता रहे हैं कि आपका डिपार्टमेंट कैसे चलाएं बट द रियलिटी इज कि जब तक जो चीज घर में नहीं होती है तब तक उसके बारे में सपोर्ट करना बहुत आसान होता है लेकिन व्हेन यू सी दैट हैपनिंग इन योर ओन हाउस इट बिकम्स अ वेरी बिग चैलेंज सो हम सिर्फ अपील लेके आए हैं तो दैट इज इट माई टाइम इज ओवर आई वुड लाइक टू से मोर बट दिस इज आई वुड से दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सो दिस इज लाइक वेरी आई वुड लाइक टू एंड इट थैंक यू thank you shahzada ji thank you for putting that alarm i think uh, definitely you really honored the time very well but uh, and i know there is so much to say uh, you highlighted the fact that uh, as a carer as a person who is looking after another person who has mental health issues uh, it's a huge challenge it's a it's a huge emotional um, you know um, it has its own emotional cost attached to it 
and i think perhaps that is what is also our motivation that uh, if i and my family are experiencing this there may be many others and together if we can support each other or uh, share knowledge share our experiences and not just at the awareness level but also hold hands with real cases with real issues as you mentioned about legal literacy as you mentioned about insurance about pension and several other issues and having experienced all that and realized its importance to go and advocate it with the people who can bring about that change um in the policies in the programs and in improve the you know ecosystem in which the mental health issues are dealt with today so thank you so much and wish you lots more energy and power i would say uh, to take this cause forward and i hope you have uh, i am sure you have uh, you know enthused many more people here uh, and uh, and hearing other volunteers we realized that there can be different levels of volunteering as you just said so even every small effort matters please uh, pick up your energy motive i hope today's webinar motivates our audience here and those who are already volunteering volunteering they continue to volunteer further with you know more zest and zeal and uh, those who have been sitting on the edge and thinking of that reason thinking of that one uh, you know motivation finally um, are able to find that today and this will be this webinar series contribution towards the celebration of world mental health day that we add more volunteers to our team to strengthen our hands and our efforts so thank you shahzada ji uh, all points well taken and thank you for offering to curate that art event uh, i have noted it and i'm sure uh, some of my other colleagues have also noted and we'll be uh, hoping that you guide us through this and we take it forward i'll make it yeah great thank you so much sir so in the past you are aware rfs has been organizing events like the poster competition or a slogan and a poetry wrong, uh, writing competition with the help of the rahat team and uh, we hope you are able to guide us better and, and we can uh, have a more impactful event uh, in future we can do it in india habitat center i know alka pande very well she will be more than happy for to support the calls and also triveni kala sangam dr uh, shri dharni i know him personally he'll also be very happy to give us space in his in his amphitheater to do this so we can plan this well and i look forward to volunteering with you to under your lead to take it ahead great so thank you sir uh, and i will take the program forward in the meanwhile uh, to dr aditya and dr aditya is here with us i would like to introduce dr aditya to all of you um and sir please allow me to tell all the participants here that you are uh, an expert in suicide prevention and mental health uh, you are a neuropsychiatrist with more than 20 years of experience in the field including leading a suicide prevention service in the uk for 15 years you're a gold medalist with in mbbs and a fellow of the royal college of psychiatrists in uk and you received your md in uh, by research from the university of edinburgh in 2023 uh we we all need to know that uh, dr aditya is a dedicated researcher uh and he is uh, you know looking after the, the, um, he's been uh, awarded a paper uh, the best paper award for a conference of international neuropsychiatry recently and um, sir has been volunteering and looking after several causes particularly in the area of mental health and uh, sir i would like to share with everyone that in various roles that you have at rfs bangalore and with the mansa neuropsychiatric hospital uh, you are uh, you know looking after the inter internship program for psychologists and psychiatrists offering uh, looking after the spread program that is suicide prevention prevention through education and raising awareness and you have been teaching at the university of wales uk and have been a psychiatric advisor to the national disaster management agency government of india so i have not said enough if you would like to add anything more can you do that and my question to you sir particularly particularly is that uh, you know in your capacity in the richmond fellowship society um, how the different rfs branches are involving volunteers and uh, you know uh, involving them in different activities if you can share some light on that and uh, how has the contribution of volunteers um strengthen the various uh, 
branches of RFS. If you could, uh, you know, elaborate on that as well. So over to you, sir. Thank you, Professor Khanna, and uh, thank you, Dr. Seth, for inviting me. Um, one of the advantages of speaking so late in a program is all the good stuff has already been said. I have very little left to say that has, I think, anything new. So it's been lovely to hear so many enthusiastic volunteers talk about the work that they're doing. And I think Professor Khanna has picked up on the secret of, all, of it all, that there is no such thing as altruism. We do it all for ourselves. I think when we volunteer, we feel better. So there really isn't, a, I, I don't know if there is such a thing as altruism. But I was going to say two things about uh, uh, certainly the RFS experience in Bangalore and Sitlagatta. I, I too am very sorry that Dr. Venkat Ramaya has not yet been able to speak because he's an extraordinary volunteer. And I would love to hear him. I'd rather shut up and let him speak. But I think he's maybe having some difficulty with his uh, communication. But I think you've also picked up the point that we are all volunteers. And RFS is nothing but a, a volunteering organization where you have different kinds of volunteers. There are people like me. And, you know, I, when you said we are also volunteers, I was a little surprised because I'd forgotten that what we're doing in RFS is volunteering. So it's just that some of us are professional volunteers. Some of us are volunteers with other experience. And like I say to all my patients and their families, you are experts with experience. So, uh, you know, we are made up of... Uh, the card carrying mental health professionals like me, like the psychologists, like some social workers, but there are also some very important volunteers of people who are caregivers, who are family members, who are clients and patients themselves. And that has been a very useful, rich uh, experience in RFS that we are all working together. And I hope in some way we are a reflection of the community that we seek to serve. And I, I as a young, I'll tell you two stories that reminded me. One is, uh, when I was a very young junior doctor, and that was a very long time ago, that um, I used to work in a national addiction service in the UK. And I remember we had done a lot of very good work in neurology and psychiatry and social work and psychology. And at the end of the program, we'd spoken to the clients and the people with the addiction. They say, what did you enjoy most about your stay, this four week stay in this national hospital for addiction? And uh, many of my patients said the thing we enjoyed most was the aromatherapy massage given by that lady, who, that nice lady who comes every Thursday. We realized that the aromatherapy massage was given by a nurse who was a volunteer. It was not the professors of psychiatry and neurology and medicine and all our, and this is the same thing I think Dr. Bashir was saying, that it is not, I think sometimes in healthcare, we focus too much on what is what we think is good for the patient in a paternalistic response, but we focus too little on what makes that individual's life better. And I think volunteerism, adds that little extra that actually professionals sometimes I neither have the time nor the bandwidth, frankly, maybe not even the skills to add. And that I think was a very useful lesson to me. The second lesson, I think Dr. Kalyan Sundaram is hiding somewhere here. And Dr. Kalyan Sundaram had this habit when I joined RFS with much reluctance, I noticed that wherever he goes, he asks someone, okay, what can you do for my patients? And I realized recently with a shock, I have also started doing the same thing recently. And I think uh, uh, Ms. Srileka was talking about the cakes and the birthdays. And I was in a party last week uh, where I met this master baker who's, who's fantastic cakes. And the first thing I asked her is, can you teach my patients and my clients how to bake so that we can make those cakes in-house? Wouldn't that be a better experience? Instead of buying cakes 40 times a year, why not we bake our own cakes and we even play it? And then I realized that Dr. Kalyan Sunum has infected me with his brand of asking people to come and help. And this is something about volunteers that I wanted to make, that all of us have something to offer. And many of my volunteers, when I ask them for help, they'll say, well, I don't know what to teach. But actually, we all have life skills. And helping my clients with whatever it is that you can do, even, even you know, a moment of human connection, that itself is hugely important. And I was sitting there thinking, look, actually, that's what RFS is. It is trying to make human connections for people who struggle with human connections. It isn't the medical, it isn't the psychological, it isn't the psychiatric. It is all of this. So anyway, I wanted to thank you for inviting me. And I'm aware of the time. And I thought if I finish a little early, we'll have time for Dr. Venkat Ramaya to speak. So thank you, all of you. And it's been a pleasure. Thank you, Dr. Aditya. I think um, very useful experiences. And yes, um, I can vouch for this, uh, what you just shared, because that's what Dr. Uh, Dr. Midhila said also does. She gets you to pick up one idea and, and she gives you that trigger and then she says, OK, now go ahead and do it. And uh, we all find our calling. And uh, I totally agree with you. We all have something to give. 
it's just that we need to overcome that inertia or, or maybe it's due to lack of confidence that we feel i cannot do anything so even if you start going to an organization and uh, you uh, you know we just simply go there be there and i'm sure there's so much to do we'll find our calling but uh, thank you so much for sharing your uh, you know your insights um, in such a limited and uh, you know words but each word totally well taken and well understood thank you so much sir i hope dr venkat ramaya uh, you know is able to uh, you know resolve the matter with his mic and able and he's able to talk to us uh, if not i like to now take this conversation forward sir can you please uh, dr venkat ramaya can you please let us know um, um aprajita if you can be in on a call with sir and let us know uh, if sir can connect um, in the meanwhile um, what i'll do is i'll uh, please let me know when sir is able to connect in the meanwhile um, i would like to thank all of the uh, panelists here uh, for sharing your insights i am sure the uh, the panelists uh, you know that is uh, dr aditya dr uh, bashi uh, you know dr aditya as well as uh, dr Sh uh, shahzada ji and uh, piyush and dr bashir all of them can definitely give us uh, one tip each but i'll come to that in a while because there are definitely some questions in the chat and i i i wish we can address all of them uh, given the limitation of time we are just towards the end of our time uh, for the webinar so what i'll do is i'll quickly run through the chat and uh, i'll see if there are any questions that need to be addressed and i'll try and also uh, address them uh, identify who they are addressed to um so there is vijay ji who is asking to the uh, to the psychiatrist that is perhaps dr aditya and dr bashir to begin with um why recovery is slow in certain cases can you tell more about treatment resistant mental illnesses so dr bashir if you could go first and maybe then we can ask dr aditya also to contribute to this dr bashir sir your mic is on mute please dr bashir yeah so yes uh, that's a great question and that's a very persisting and one of the very most challenging question in the psychiatry community we doctors we face every day uh sometimes you know i always give one example that uh, uh it is better to accept Uh, but if we look into uh, the science part of part of it, our body, each of the tissues, each part of our body, it is made different way. Our skin, when there is a cut, it takes hardly ten days to you know uh, recover. So that's why the stitches they want to do in a week. And when it comes to a bone, it takes uh, one and a half months, and that is the time for the plaster. But when it comes to a neurological deficit, uh, actually all the psychiatric cases are slowly coming out. there are organic some neurotransmitter changes in the brain and the body so they takes many many months quite many months so that's why it is not that uh, they are uh, why they are not uh, getting sort of you know cured easily that it is better to accept that if there is a control even that is better and exactly one more thing is there as this mental illnesses they are not just a biochemical change if it is only that it is so easy Just medicine and get cured. It is not that. It is a biopsychosocial muscle disorder. So we have to look into the other things. Like there is a social uh, social uh, um, contribution to that. There is a psychological uh, th thought process involved. So all that has to be all so many other professionals. Not only so many other professionals. Very well said by Dr. Aditya, which I love that yes, that extra which we forget to doctors, professionals we forget that extra is expected from this. extra volunteers and that extra is touch of humanity and uh, one more thing i in fact before you ask i i would love to before tell this sentence that to all the volunteers to all the human beings here all the professionals here what you can give to another person with an illness already who is you know suffering plus any man, any person at all is your time and your attention and that is enough for a volunteer sometimes if you think that i do not have a skill no you just be there that is enough be with that child who is playing alone just 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 look at him be with that particular you know that uh, neurological disordered patient who is struggling with each every smallest effort and just imagine about that particular patient who is totally immobile and looking at the looking at the ceiling 
muscular dystrophy are you there with him just talking to him reading a reading a book so there are huge number of things to do and god bless all of them those who are doing and may god motivate all of us to do more volunteering and that is for us right thank you dr mishra i think very well answered and uh, they need to just be connecting with us to know more and i'm sure you would all be happy to um, all the panelists here will be happy to connect with people who have uh, indicated their questions in the chat uh, i would like to add how can you volunteer Uh, there are three partner organizations here of which rahat and uh, rfs delhi have their social media on which you can reach us you know reach out to us and uh, you can even leave your email id in the chat here so that we can uh, share with you information about both these organizations uh, through email and you can then reach out further rfs website i know very well has uh, an option for volunteering so kindly uh, check that out and aprajita if you could share the website details uh, in the chat for rfs and uh, rahat that would be really nice um there are certain other questions i'm sorry due to paucity of time and i may not be able to take all but uh, yeah i'm just running through these and i'm trying to see um uh, can we change our states of mind once we understand the mind in a better way just a moment. i'll go down further uh okay let me see prajita please let me know if any question has been missed out um yeah there is uh, nisha ji has asked about uh, more no, information on insurance and pension for pmis uh, i don't think that question can be answered uh, at length shahzada ji in the short span of time available now but uh, i think in future we can definitely organize a, a webinar on this or at least share through our social media information on webinars that our other colleagues and uh, partner organizations are organizing from time to time about ins uh, uh, insurance and pension related for uh, persons with mental illnesses and uh, if you have any uh, reference for people to read sir shahzada ji please do share it here maybe in the chat if it is accessible right now as we'll make sure that we share uh, through the uh, rahat and rfs uh, you know social media okay uh, we'll thank you and we yeah. can also put the put it put the information up on the rfs uh, website sir so if you can give us some re reference or reading material um here we will uh, put it on the website yeah you uh, can just uh, go to yeah. the chapter that refers to insurance in uh, 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 mental health care act 2017 and uh, rights of persons with disability 2016 and uh, i just want to say that right now if you want to volunteer for insurance then the thing that we are advocating right now is to get the 18% gst removed because the pmi is not employed in most of the cases so it is very expensive already for them to pay the premium so removal of 18% gst is the campaign for advocacy for the government based on feedbacks given by families and dr nirmala shrinivasan is heading that campaign and you can always volunteer for that to do some uh, you know advocacy of that great uh, thank you sir uh, shahzada ji dr aditya if you could also because there's a question in the chat about how to prioritize mental well being in daily life of a person uh, particularly of a person who's suffering from a mental illness and i would say in general as well so if you could give us some tips about how to prioritize our mental well being and our daily life that would be very useful for our audience over to you dr aditya It's a bad question for a psychiatrist. We're very good at illness. We're not very good at wellness. Um, but in general, I I must confess, I spend all my time talking about ill health and uh, illness and disorder purely because there is a massive growth of the wellness space. I you know you can't throw a stone before you hit someone who's dealing with wellness. And I wanted to say one thing, which I think is very important: this idea that you know I think doing the things that make us happy. practicing those skills that help us deal with unhappiness what what is now called by psychologists distress tolerance is a really useful life skill and i wanted to remove things like meditation from the healthcare space because i was sitting there thinking in healthcare because we are struggling with getting people better we kind of steal other people's tools 
And I was sitting there thinking meditation, for example, and mindfulness has been now become part of mainstream psychology. And I think that's okay. But I think a lot of us need to practice the things that make us happy, feel well. And even this whole thing that I think Dr. Basir had pointed out, which is unless we help others, can we really feel well enough in ourselves? Because we are social beings. And I, I wanted to lastly say to those of my patients who are ill and to their families, wellness, you know, illness doesn't happen because we have been, you know, lax or weak or whatever. Illness can happen to any one of us. My worry about talking about wellness is that a lot of people think that if we do the right things, you know, do the yoga, drink as apple cider vinegar every morning, then we're going to be well and we won't catch the depressions or the schizophrenias or the bipolar disorders that my poor patients catch. I think it is, you know, whether if you're, if you're a secular person, you think it's bad luck. If you're a religious person, you might call it something else. But I do think as psychiatrists, we're very bad at talking about health. So I will shut up and let someone else talk about it. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Aditya. I think uh, there'll be several questions. There are, I, I can see some more questions in the chat, but due to paucity of time, I would like to uh, leave uh, the, you know, these questions for a later time. And definitely, I would like to acknowledge that each question is important. There are questions on self-care and other very important issues. I would request the, uh, the participants to please connect with us through our social media. Um, that is, um, on, Aprajita has already uh, given the link to the website. Aprajita, I'll request you to please share the links to the social media of RFS and Rahat, uh, particularly. And um, and also, uh, if the participants can then uh, leave questions there, uh, we'll be able to, uh, you know, share them with the uh, panelists here and we'll definitely answer them through the social media. So thank you so much. Thank you, each of the panelists here, each of the so-called volunteers because i know all our volunteers and i'm totally uh, you know convinced of that uh, i would now like to invite dr midla say to briefly offer her closing remarks and uh, then i will invite dr manish cha who's the secretary general rfs india and secretary rfs uh, delhi branch to offer the vote of thanks so dr midla say and then dr cha please thank you aparna i think my job has been made easy because uh, Aparna has been um, highlighting the main things after each speaker and uh, volunteers. In fact, all the professionals are here volunteers. And one thing that has come up very, very clearly is that we are not doing something, what the word altruism, we are doing something because we are really looking after our own health and happiness. And I, I'm reminded of uh, Dalai Lama saying that um, happiness doesn't come, it is not ready-made. It comes through our own actions. And what are those actions? Dr. Bashir and others have very clearly said, spending time without any conditions. Our volunteers have said, irrespective of age, irrespective of the situation, going with an open mind, just being there with other people, especially those who have stress. Uh, one of the volunteers said, it's not just happiness. It's sometimes people when they are sad and they are sorrow, even just listening to them gives them solace. And their happiness, their cheerfulness gives a volunteer happiness. And nothing could be more satisfying to a volunteer than finding that you have made somebody happy. That happiness is intrinsic and it lasts and it motivates you to give more of your time. It's been a very good session. A lot of questions. I think we were too much was packed. We were aware of it. But we wanted a different perspective, so many different ways in looking at mental health and happiness and how it is connected. Being a life skills trainer myself, I, I really feel very strongly that life skills means finding the challenges within the given constraints, finding happiness and satisfaction. We will always have constraints. And like Shezada said, 
that we don't only talk about joy of volunteering, we also talk about the challenges of volunteering. But those are the life skills that we get. How to deal with those challenges? That is something that we learn only from our own experience. And the more we do it, the better we are. And I think with that very, very pleasant note, I feel I would like Dr. Jha to conclude this series of um, webinars, which has the process has been very intensive, very participatory, and very rewarding in establishing contacts with many people. And I'm sure the ideas that we've got, Shezada, I would like to say that um, art, mental health and art, not just for volunteers, but even for the persons who are living with mental illnesses, for them, art is so therapeutic. And if we have an exhibition, it would be really a hit and we will really go for it. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. And I would like now to pass it on to Dr. Jha. Thank you, Dr. Sait. It's, it's been very heartening to hear such excellent uh, people, you know, contributing to the field of mental health. Let me tell you in a nutshell, Richmond Fellowship Society came into existence with our establishment of Bangalore branch way back in 1986. And Richmond Fellowship today happens to be the largest network of mental health service provider with 30 countries having Richmond Society. Each and every branch which we have today has towering personality. I'm not going to speak about any individual because it will be belittling their contribution and the amount of service they have rendered in trying to uplift the PMIs. Richmond, in three words, help has helped helping and is going to help. That is recover, rehabilitate, and reintegrate. These success stories of PMIs will fill the heart of people and the hearers with tears streaming down without even realizing how the tears have welled and flowed like a river down their eyes. Those are the success stories of our great volunteers. Now talking about volunteers, let me share with you a small story. As a little boy, I grew up among the Jesuit fathers. And being the only Hindu in the, among the Christians, I used to wonder when I look at this Jesuit father so far away from the country, yet always glowing with happiness, glowing with happiness in doing anything. And that got me thinking, who are these volunteers? What are their characteristic trait? And let me share with you, which is validated now all over the world, that volunteers are those people who are full of compassion. And they're very passionate about whatever the cause they are in it. Their professional reliability and integrity is amazing. It's amazing. I'm not going to describe them. But the energetic exuberance display of behavior to the onlookers and the observers with the flexibility of being a creative learner is abhorrent. And then I said, what about this happiness? Where does this strength of happiness come from, these volunteers? And then I realized happiness has two components, a pleasure and joy. And since the joy of volunteering is the key factor, joy is always right from within. It's right from your heart. It's right from within. And that is why it is everlasting. When you look at a volunteer, you know, as I have interacted with uh, my people, I call them my family, you know, I'm not going to name any one of them, as I said. But I met the mentor of RFS, Dr. Narayan Reddy, amazing at the age of 92. Unbelievable. Any word I speak about him would not be enough. Annals can be spoken about. I met another gentleman on whom the mantle of steering Bangalore falls, and you have heard him in the background with another gentleman who has 
already been spoken by him. Every branch of RFS, whether it is Sidlagata, whether it is Bangalore, whether it is Delhi, whether it is Lucknow, it's full of people, all volunteers, and they're doing a wonderful service to the mankind. You know, a visit would justify then me harping upon the so-called success stories of theirs and the centers. You know, I would uh, sum up the webinar series, which was, you know, on mental health and happiness. Each and every topic, especially power of gratitude, learning and unlearning about mental health, the art of caregiving and the joy of voluntary, was shared, spoken by doings in this field with lovely insight being shared. And with this, I would like to thank not only the team who has so painlessly, without even ever expressing, Aparna, Dr. Said, people in the background, and people from other branches of RFS. I'm really, from my core of a heart, not only thank them, but I thank all the panelists and everybody who has actually come forward to make this a wonderful, interesting webinar series. Thank you so much. Over to you, Aparna. Thank you, sir. Thank you for recognizing the efforts of so many people who've been part of this process uh, of organizing the webinars. And we really appreciate your acknowledging um, all the volunteers. And I think it's very encouraging. So uh, with this, we end this webinar series. I would like to share that um, uh, the webinars have been recorded, video recorded, and we have been sharing, putting these uh, you know, webinars recordings on uh, YouTube. We will be through our social media also sharing. So in case uh, there is anyone who's interested in catching up on any one of the webinars or maybe all four, please do um, check our social media. Uh, that is the Rahat and RFS and Lady Avon College social media pages uh, for links to the webinars. And we hope you uh, are able to view the programs and um, you know gain insights about the kind of uh, information that has been shared by all the experts. So I thank everyone. I think with that, we can uh, call the webinar to an end. Thank you so much to each of the participants and each of the panelists and all the people who have attended the webinar so far. We feel extremely uh, you know, happy and express our gratitude for you to spare your time and be with us. And we look forward to future uh, part, your participation in our events in future. A big thank you from the RFS India team, from the Rahat team, and the Lady Evan College team. Thank you to each of the participants in front of the screen and behind the screens. Thank you.